The Goat House is back, breaking down what each NFL team should do at the trade deadline. Some teams should buy, some teams should sell. We'll talk about specific targets, and we'll talk about what teams could avoid leading up to the deadline. We already have trade deadline videos on the channel, and there will be more coming leading up to Tuesday's deadline. So join us, but let's get into this video. Let's start with the AFC East teams. We'll start with the New England Patriots, and I will get to every team. But what I think the Patriots should do at the deadline, number one, is trade their corner Jonathan Jones, who is on an expiring deal. And of course, if they keep him and let him walk, they could get a compensatory pick. That wouldn't be until 2026. And I would expect them to be active, adding players. So there will be a, a cancellation process in that. So trade them now. Get something out of nothing, in my opinion. Teams could use corners. They're still in that rebuild process, but not stage one. I want them to turn it around this offseason. So get that pick right now. They don't want you know a longtime veteran player here. That's you know not going to be part of the rebuild or the retool, whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, they could possibly get a fifth round pick for him. That would be great. I wouldn't give him away for a seventh, but it may, it may be a sixth round pick there as well. I would also consider trading Kendrick Bourne. Yes, they like him. Yes, he's solid if he's healthy once he gets back going. But they have a lot of other receivers, young receivers, and they want to add more. They want that number one receiver. So they're not going to have enough room for all these guys. And some of those young guys are playing pretty well with Drake May. Um, Butte is playing well. You know, Douglas is big big time part of the future. Polk is a big time part of the future once he gets going more. So there's really no need for Bourne and I think they would get a decent pick for him. So I would trade him and a couple guys I would keep not the end of the world if you trade him, but I would avoid trading Godshaw because he's, they like him. He's a very solid nose tackle for them. And then Osborne who I, you know, had a touchdown with Drake may looks pretty decent. Not the end of the world if you trade him, but that's uh, what I'm thinking if I'm the New England Patriots at the deadline here. And I think all this is possible as well. I'm going to say the Buffalo Bills should trade for an edge rusher, but it has to be a specific edge rusher, a specific type of edge rusher, not just any guy. Don't just throw picks away. They got guys that can play off the edge. They got Von Miller coming back. So do they really want to drop snaps from some of those guys? Because they have Russo, Epines, all these guys can play. But there's specific edge rushers I like for them. Baron Browning being that big one. His name has been, you know, popped up a bit. Not necessarily with the Bills, but just in terms of trade talks. Do the Broncos actually want to trade him? Though that's the question. But I would love him for the Bills because he actually has more experience off ball than off edge. I think where he's best and where he has upside is off the edge. But to me. He can help the Bills in both spots, and they kind of use they need depth, quality depth in both spots. So I actually like that a lot. Shouldn't be overly expensive. Again, has that upside could be part of their team for the, for a, for a long time. And then Clowney, do they really need another starter? But Clowney could be really good in the right system. I think he'd be really good with the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are one of the better teams in football right now, and it seems a little open. There's no like sure thing. Every time we think a team's really good, they kind of drop off. It's pretty open. So go get that extra piece. And Clowney could, you know, he's good off the edge, but also good in run support. Um, so those are two guys. I don't really like anyone else for them. I really don't. I think those are the two guys that I like, and they're both different. Uh, and I would say trade Mike Edwards. He hasn't been playing for them. I think you can get something for him, a swap, a 6-7 swap or a 7th round pick. Take it. You know, if you already traded for Cooper and you're going to bring in an edge or somebody. Uh, so that would make sense for the Buffalo Bills. Some things to keep an eye on there. For the Jets, I'm going to say trade Mike Williams. I know he played a little bit last night in their victory and Lazard's dealing with an injury. So maybe they want Mike Williams. Uh, that could be the case and they're saying it to try to drive the price up because they're not really getting offered anything. But... Him and Rodgers don't get along on the field, obviously, connecting chemistry-wise. We're kind of just sick of this playing out. I think you dump him, get something for him. They've traded so many picks away. Even if it's a small pick, get a pick back. Uh, so accept the six or look for a swap deal to get you know six or seven. If you'd rather gain a seven than swap up to a six, that's, I suppose, fine as well. Avoid trading away more picks. They dug themselves. I know they won last night against the Texans. I definitely think they could start winning, but it, they're, nothing special is going to happen this year, right? We know that. It was still sloppy last night, even with the victory. The defense just played very well is what it was, and maybe Adams came alive at the end there. But stop trading away picks. Don't don't dig yourself any deeper. But they're, they're so far in it going for a Super Bowl that maybe they could – they might just go even deeper, like, hey, this is it, and these guys know they're all going to be fired after this year, so they possibly could do it, but don't kill the future here with this one, so some simple thoughts on the Jets here. Miami Dolphins, I would say, big thing is keep your draft picks. I, I know this team could turn it around, come back in the AFC East, get second place in the AFC East pretty easily because two is back, the offense should be explosive, right? Defense, not the best right now. 
injuries at the pass rush position, so they could get desperate and look to add an edge rusher. But I, I don't really see the point. I don't. I, I know they can turn things around. I don't see them winning anything special this year. I still think they're a little bit worse in work in progress. They need, you know, uh, quite a few things uh, to add to this team to kind of get back on track. Uh, and then training for a pass rush. I mean, they have good pass rushers. They're either injured or there's young guys that are developing. So you either add a starter and then that guy, you don't want to be the starter once you're fully healthy and your guys are on the field. So it's like kind of useless if you trade it for a starter. And if you trade for like a rotational guy or a young guy, you have those guys and you're going to stunt their growth. So I don't really agree with, unless it's a really solid guy that was way cheaper than expected, then that's fine. Of course, it's going to depend on, um, the compensation here, but I, I would avoid it. Uh, and if you could get something for Clayus Campbell, I think there could be teams that are interested. So why not? You know, try to pick up a pick, uh, pick up a pick. I, I should say, but not really a must with that one for the Dolphins. The Commanders a little bit of a tricky one, but I'm gonna say keep the draft picks, and it, it's really based off of. And there could be surprise trade candidates out there that they could get. And then maybe they get someone good for a pretty good cost. It's possible. But I'm looking at the tr the realistic trade candidates. And I don't really love any of these guys for them as fits in multiple ways. That's why I say avoid training for non-fits. Not just not, non, uh, you know, schematic fits. Which is important though at the same time. Because this is their coaching staff. They're going to ride with this coaching staff the way they're playing right now for a while. So you don't want to bring guys in that... Do they really fit? You're trading away picks. Uh, you know, another thing is, though, they got a bunch of young, good players. They have a lot of chemistry. If you talk about which team has the most chemistry, which team is clicking the most right now, I'd say maybe the Commanders. I mean, Mariota gets thrown in there against the Panthers. It's look like they don't miss a beat, right? This is a really solid young team. I don't want to disrupt that with guys that may or may not be fits. I don't want to bring an older, you know, veteran guy in there that may not be a fit. They also drafted very well. They're building around their franchise piece, Jaden Daniels, through the draft. So I, I don't want to disrupt that. But, of course, they could add because they're a good team. They want to be even better if possible. So I understand it. Some guys I would consider, uh, Ogbo Okronkwo, a uh, young pass rush. I mean, young out of the veterans, I should say. Uh, that could help them in terms of rotation. Would be cheap, 6th or 7th. I'd be fine with that. Larry Borum coming back from injury for the Bears. He's a guy that can play tackle or guard, and they could use that depth. He could be cheap. So those things I'm okay with, but I see guys getting thrown out there like some longtime veteran receivers that don't really make sense because they already have those types of receivers or longtime veteran pass rushers. They got a bunch of young guys that they're, they're working really well together. So I know a lot of people want the commanders to do something. I'm a little hesitant with that. I love the way they're playing right now. We don't want to disrupt that. But if you can get a good player for a cheap cost, I can't fully disagree with that. The key thing with the Giants here at the deadline is keep key players. There's a lot of talk about Aziz Ajilari and Darius Slayton. Is it the end of the world if they trade those guys? Not really if they get a decent pick, but I would keep them. Aziz Ajilari is playing very well right now. Thibodeau's injured. He wasn't playing that well. I still believe in him, but Ajilari is playing better. He's helping that defensive line. Be, believe it or not, they have one of the better defensive lines in football. It starts with Dexter Lawrence, but still. So, uh, you know, Ajilari could be part of the future. They have zero depth behind their who's supposed to be their starters, Burns and Tibbs. And then Slayton's playing pretty well for them. No one's going to give them a, a, that good of a pick. Uh, I, I would just hang on to him right now. Uh, consider, if you're going to add, consider Nate Davis. It's not really a must. If you did it, it better be dirt cheap, but they could use a guard, an offensive line help like that. But it's tough to say for them to add because they are struggling. We know they're not going anywhere, but if it's dirt cheap, um, you know, if they get something premium for Ajilari and Slayton, fourth round picks then maybe you consider it but uh, I don't know if they're going to get that I don't think they're going to consider anything I don't think they're going to trade those guys I really don't but something to kind of keep an eye on there but there's nothing here that's really the end of the world I mean if they trade for one of those guys for dirt cheap then that's the end of the world for me so we'll see what happens with the Giants the Eagles are looking like they're back recently they're playing some good football really the only thing is consistency getting after the quarterback they got a bunch of guys that could play but no guy that's like sure thing from snap to snap getting after it right now. So I would say trade for an edge rusher. We'll see if they can do that. There's only a couple that I really like as fits though. Um, I, I, Clowney is one. I mean, that would, that would really help them step up even more. That would make them more of contenders right now. I think he would play. There are certain teams he'd play a lot better than how he's playing right now. He's actually winning reps. It's kind of going unnoticed because the Panthers. But I would like Clowney. I think Baron Browning's a pretty good fit in Fangio's defense as well. I guess the knock on that is they already got a bunch of guys like that. They got a, bu a bunch of like the high-end twos or uh, developing starters, right? So 
the more I talk, I'm like clowny or bust here with the Eagles. I'd say avoid Zedaria Smith, who's been linked to them a little bit, unless cheap. Zedaria Smith was one, once one of my favorite defensive players in football, and he has declined. He's declined. He's, he's definitely a good player still, but he's declined quite a bit. He's an older veteran, and he has major durability concerns. And the Browns are saying they want a good day three pick. That tells me fourth or fifth round pick. I would definitely not do a fourth round pick. A fifth, maybe it's not the end of the world. I wouldn't do it, though. If you can get him for a sixth or a seventh or a swap, okay, why not then? If you are if you feel you're a contender. Uh, and I'd say avoid trading for offense. They don't need offense. So don't, you don't really need to trade any more picks. Focus on defense, if anything. You know, I, I guess if you want to get a cheap, depth offensive lineman sure but offense looks really really solid right now I wouldn't even mind a cheap you know depth running back but not the end of the world if they had something like that so that's really not what I mean but I mean if you're gonna spend at the deadline in a decent pick and you go for something you really don't need on offense versus an edge rusher then I'm not gonna be thrilled I don't I'm pretty sure fans probably aren't gonna be thrilled as well but Clowney would be that big one I'm starting to think they might stay put but Roseman is not afraid to make that big deal so we'll see Cowboys, I'm going to say trade for a running back. This team is night and day different from the past. It's because they, the roster's not as good. But the big thing is the running back position. They have no running game, which is forcing them into obvious passing situations, and that's making it harder for guys like Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb. So if you add a running back, I think it really could help them uh, in more ways than just running the football. People don't realize it opens up the passing game. It opens, and you can control the clock better. So it actually helps your defense. So Travis Etienne would be a dream. I wouldn't overpay for him. His value is down right now, but then the question is, will the Jags trade him for that value? But that's a big time running back that would thrive on the Cowboys and open up their, their entire team. Like I said, and Khalil Herbert would be a cheap one. Uh, Miles Sanders possibly, but he has you know a couple years on his contract still. So Etienne Herbert, what I'm watching for, I think Herbert's more realistic. Etienne would be bigger and really boost his team. And I would consider a receiver like KJ Osborne, where he's got a one year deal. You don't have to worry about future years. And you know it's a rotation receiver that he played good with the good quarterback Kirk Cousins. So if you go, you send him to Dak, I, I think he could play pretty solid. So that'd be one. Like if you can get him for a seventh round pick, I would actually love that for the Cowboys. So those are my options. For Dallas heading in the deadline, but they're very cautious with their money right now because they don't have much, so they could very well stay put. The Bengals are a very interesting one for this video because part of me is like, a big part of me is like, this offense is legit when everyone's out there, and I wish they could be a little more consistent, but they're legit. Those guys, Joe, led by Joe Burrow, could win a Super Bowl. Offense line stay healthy. Could they look to add offensive line? They're looking for tackles probably, and there's really not many options out there. But then defensively, that's what's holding them back. So I'm like, do I go out and trade for that big piece on defense? My issue is right now, because it does not feel like a Bengals defense right now, my issue is they need to stop the run a lot better. So they need an interior piece, right? And they're not getting after the quarterback that well. Hendrickson is, but no one else is. Hubbard's even been disappointing. So they could use an edge rusher. They don't have any depth at corner and they could look to upgrade at one of those corner spots as well. So you start going down the list of how do you get this Bengals defense back to where it is. When they made deep runs in the playoffs, they went to the Super Bowl. They were great because the offense was explosive, but that defense was nasty in the playoffs. They are far from that right now on defense. So they need so many things on defense to me. Like if you just add a nose tackle, is that going to fix it? If you just add a corner, is that going to fix it? That makes me want to go, maybe you should probably stay put. But they are. what are they missing more than anything right now? A real nose tackle. They uh, maybe it's not a common take, but they do not have a real, true DJ reader and a true nose tackle in there. They think they do. It feels like, but they don't. Devon Godshaw is the big one from the Patriots. That would be a big addition for them. He shouldn't be overly expensive, but yeah, you might have to trade a fifth, maybe even up to a fourth. Maybe that's a little too much because you'd have multiple needs. But that would really boost this team stop and run and then possibly helping other guys get after the quarterback. DJ Jones, another one. I don't believe the Broncos trade him, but it's a possibility. His name's been thrown out there. And not a nose tackle. But how about Chase Young? Bringing him back to that state of Ohio and then just getting Hendrickson some help. The issue with that is, you know, is Hubbard sitting on the bench then? Uh, what's the situation there? But I think that would be interesting more so. I'm not really expecting to happen. And I'd say this week, in week nine, they play the Raiders. If they somehow lose that game, scratch everything I said, I would sell. I would actually... You're going to hate that I say it, but I would trade Trey, trade Trey Hendrickson because there was a little bit of contract dispute in the offseason. How much longer is he going to be with the Bengals? Uh, and they probably got to revamp this defense. So if the season is lost, I don't think they're going to do it, but I would trade guys that you can get something for 
uh, and then just kind of rebuild that defense. But that's if they lose to the Raiders this week. I'm not expecting it. Uh, but nose tackle is the big one for the Bengals. They're one of the more interesting teams at the deadline. They typically stay put uh, and be very cautious because they do have to spend on some star players that they have. So um, we'll see. So the Steelers should trade for a receiver. It's been going on for so long. It looks actually like they don't need one as much right now because other guys are stepping up. But I still I think there's going to be a time where teams game plan a little more properly for the new Russell Wilson offense. It looks great right now. I'm confident with it. Um, surprisingly, no one really expected that to happen right now. But I do that if we did, if they don't add a receiver, you fast forward like four weeks, teams are starting to game plan a little better for it, and then they're going to be going, oh, we need a receiver again. So I'm worried about that. And you can add a cheap receiver. Easily could be done. They're looking good right now. Why not? And some of these teams, I don't love the fits. There's some receivers available. I don't love the fits. I love the fits for the Steelers. You can get multiple different types. I don't think they're going to bring in multiple at the same time, but – Boyd, I like Tyler Boyd. He's probably my favorite one for them, to be honest. You put him in the slot. He's a physical guy after the catch. Just feels like a really good fit for the Steelers' offense. Uh, Traylon Burke's an interesting one. We're really cheap, and I guess the knock on that is you don't know if you'll be able to get much from him, but I think he really fits Arthur Smith's scheme. Get him the ball underneath. Get you know, Use him on the gadget plays. So if you like your starters right now because guys like Van Jefferson stepping up and you just want a guy that can kind of come in and help you in different ways from the rotation – I take a look at a guy like Burks. Mike Williams is different than his other two. We're talking about he's an outside contested catch receiver, but those guys typically also work good in Arthur Smith's offense. And then Adam Thielen would be more along the Tyler Boyd lines, you know, a slot receiver. I think all these guys would work. I think it'd be a really good addition. And then consider adding a guard like Nate Davis, but they've, they've coached up their current offense line, even if it's been beat up at times, but they could be looking for a guard. That's not a guy I'm dying to have. It better be damn cheap if you're going to add him. But Steelers are definitely one of those uh, teams that are going to be interesting at the deadline here. The Browns, I'd say, trades the area Smith, which very well I'm expecting it to happen. And it's just not a guy that's going to be part of your or of your future, and you're not going to win anything right now. And uh, you might be able to get something decent for him because there's not too many edge rushers that are actually available and teams are desperate right now. So uh, I would accept a fifth. Or, or better, they might try to get a fourth. That would be A-plus situation for them. Uh, if you get a sixth, I, you know, I don't think it's the end of the world, honestly. But I'd say avoid staying in win-now mode. They, they, they were probably going to be sellers, but they beat the Ravens. So now they might cancel all that. We saw the Broncos do the same thing last year, how that worked out for them. we got to understand that the Browns aren't going to win anything major this year. So then uh, they kind of got to... You know, where are they at? Well, you know, they need they need stuff. They need a, a quarterback in the future. They know it. They need a receiver of the future. So can you you can't really afford to stay put. You need picks. You need to plan for the future rather than winning a Super Bowl right now. So don't act like they can't really act like they're gonna do that. Ravens, you know, they could add multiple things. When they traded for Deontay Johnson, they traded him for just a swap of picks next to nothing. They had the Panthers pay like all of his salary. So they're looking to do something else and it could be a number of things. I'd say trade for a guard. This offensive line isn't as good as past offensive lines. It's not bad. They can coach him up. They can get better as the year goes on. But in the games they've lost, the offensive lines actually look kind of bad. But in the games they've won, it's looked really good. So uh, I would add some. I think you can add a guard. If you can call up the Jags and get Brandon Scherf, I mean, that is a major, major upgrade. And he fits the Raiders, philo- or, excuse me, the Ravens' philosophy, actually. He's got an expiring deal, so they're not trapped in long term. It's something they like to do. So that would be major. Nate Davis, another guard that could be acquired. He'd be really cheap if you trade anything you know, more than a seventh for him or a swap of picks. I wouldn't really agree with it, but, um, you know, adding a guard could be good. Other guys to consider, if they're looking for a pass rusher, Baron Browning would fit. Do they bring Clowney back and upgrade there? They had him last year. He was great for them. And then could they add a corner? Uh, Tredavious White would be a decent fit. Uh, probably be depth for them, but yeah, they already added Deontay Johnson. Look for them to possibly do something else here. Scherf would be a big time get for Baltimore. For the Chicago Bears, the biggest thing of the deadline is for the love of God, keep your draft picks. They keep trading away draft picks, and look what the Commanders have done. They brought in with Jaden Daniels, same draft class, a ton of rookies, a ton of draft selections. The Bears need to do something similar for Caleb Williams, bring in the young players and build around that. That's how you build a Super Bowl in this league. Of course, you bring in veteran players uh, you know, here and there like they've done, but they got to hang on to some of these draft picks and just trust the process in the draft. I'd say especially avoid trading for a defense. It's something I could see them doing. Uh, at, they keep trying to add another pass rusher opposite of Montez Sweat, and of course they could use one, but this defense, I'd say right now, it's the best defense in football right now. What if you at the deadline, if you add another defensive piece, 
piece, what is that going to do for you? It's not going to do much. You know, they can't. They already have the top defense, so it really doesn't make sense to me. Keep your draft picks. And another thing, you could trade Khalil Herbert and Nate Davis. There's already some talks on that. The Bears could use a guard right now, though. It feels like uh, so. Are, are they? Should they be desperate? I know Nate Davis hasn't clicked with them, I suppose. So why not if you can get something? But are, should they be desperate to trade a guard? No, they can honestly use a guard, but. Wouldn't really. I don't know if I would trade for Scherf. He's a you know 32 year old veteran guy, expiring deal. It's kind of like a Super Bowl or bust move for the Bears, which is not they're not in position to do that. But keep the damn draft picks, and they keep trading them away. Uh, build this thing right around Caleb Williams. Do it the right way. So the Vikings are interesting because I probably would have had them stay put before the Cam Robinson trade. Because are they? They're built to be a good team. Are they built to win the Super Bowl? Sam Darnold, the defense, you know, doesn't play well against playoff type teams or like veteran type teams but it was a pretty it was a pretty good trade for Cam Robinson so they have already decided to go on that path they already decided it they're in so don't just dip your toe in in, in the pool there go all the way in so I would say they need a cornerback for this defense to be better Gilmore struggling right now uh, and they have Griffin on the other side who isn't the best they have Murphy's their best corner who can play inside or out uh, but they don't want to be trapped with playing him in one of those. So I, I'd say at a corner, a guy like Jonathan Jones could really help. He can play inside and out as well. Uh, they have Gilmore, former Patriot corner, so they're familiar with each other. We know they would fit. Tredavious White would be another one, but I worry about his durability. He's declining a little bit. Uh, and there's been a little bit of rumors they could trade former draft pick who was supposed to be pretty solid, Brian Asamoah. And he still has upside. If teams are interested, I'd say trade him because Flores is expected to be their defense coordinator for a long time, good defense coordinator with his situations off the field. I don't know if anyone's going to hire him to be the head coach. So we know Asamoah doesn't fit that defense trade him. They need picks. They're thin on picks this year. That's why I say avoid trading more 2025 draft picks because they're already super thin. Again, I liked the Cam Robinson trade, but just try to – they don't really have a lot of trade pieces, but Asamoah was one that popped up. Get something. Get something right now. That's what I would say for the Vikings. But Jonathan Jones would be a really solid fit for them. Back-to-back -back NFC North teams that should trade for a corner. The Packers, I mean, they have solid corners, solid young corners that can play, uh, you know, right there with the veteran Jair Alexander. But Alexander's been beat up a couple times this year. He's missed some games. And look at that defense with and without him. It is a major, major difference. They need another corner in there. Uh, you know, in case of injury, but also a guy that possibly could start with a guy like Alexander. Brandon Eccles is a rotation, a depth guy, but he has some decent experience. He's still young. I think he can play. He's been behind star corners with the Jets. Uh, Robert Salah is over there helping the Packers. I, that one makes a lot of sense. Jonathan Jones is better, so that would be a bigger one there. I like the fit of Eccles. They definitely could use another corner. They don't have to pay a premium to add a corner either. You just get a guy that can play possibly like an Eccles. Uh, and then I'd say consider trading Preston Smith. It is tough because he's a longtime Packer. has been very good for them. Um, he's declining a little bit. He has multiple years left on his deal, so if you can shed that, it'd be pretty good. But it is tough because the Packers are trying to win a Super Bowl this year, believe it or not. So do, and I believe they can do that, but do they trade a veteran piece that possibly can help them? So that's kind of the knock on that. It's not a must or do not. But I, I look for the corner position. There's some talk about edge, but... I mean, they have Smith right now. They have a couple of young guys that that could step up more uh, from the last couple of draft classes. So um, I don't know if it's as must as much of a must as people are talking about. But of course, you do want to make this team as Super Bowl like as you can because they have that potential. The Detroit Lions are an obvious one. Trade for an edge rusher to to step in for Aiden Hutchinson with him out because this team looks like the best team in football right now. And they can win a Super Bowl. So you have to add an edge rusher that can help you do that. But you also don't want to overpay because they love their draft picks. Uh, and you want to find the right one. And I have specific ones that I like. And I know they're linked to Zedaria Smith right now. But I, I would avoid him unless he's cheap. I mean, this is a guy that once was very, very good. But he's declining. And he could still be good. He'd probably be good with the Lions. You know, I'm not saying he wouldn't be good. But the Browns are looking for a, an early day three pick. Tells me fourth or fifth round pick. I definitely would not do the fourth. A fifth, I wouldn't do either. It's not the end of the world. He also has major durability concerns. Comes in the lines. They lost Hutchinson for injury. Davenport injured. It's another guy with durability concerns. I would fear that would happen, unfortunately. I would fear that they, their luck would not be... They would be unlucky, right? I love Clowney for them. Of course, they don't want to pay a premium. 
he would be good with the Lions. He would be very productive. He's not productive right now, but he is winning reps. It's just the situation he is in. He'd be really good with the Lions, and that would kind of put them, you wonder, as good as they are right now, without that edge, can they win a Super Bowl? And that could kind of put them back in that driver's seat. And then a kind of a smaller one, the other Browns pass rusher, I would rather them go for Okoronkwo, who would be like a sixth or seventh round pick. The Lions are really good bringing in they're younger guy like when they draft guys, young talent, and they get more out of them. They develop them. Okoronko's had flashes. He's not super young, but he's definitely younger than the other guys we're talking about. He's had flashes. He's always been signed based off of potential. I think he would play pretty good for the Lions. I would rather have him. I mean, if Zedarius was a six-round pick, I'd probably go. If he's if they're trading a six-round pick, I'd probably go for him. But if it's like a fourth or a fifth versus Okoronko, a sixth or a seventh, I would definitely go with the younger guy there for sure. But Lions are definitely an interesting team to watch at the specific position at the deadline all eyes on them titans i'd say take advantage right now trade tyler boyd which i haven't heard i'm the only person mentioned tyler boyd i'm not saying he will get traded but the titans struggling the season's over right (laughs) you hate to say it but they're looking out for the future they're going to need a future quarterback boyd's on an expiring deal the titans are going to look to add guys in free agency so uh, you know you won't get a comp pick for boyd most likely Trade him now, get a pick. He's going to be a free agent next year. If he wants to join Brian Callahan once again, then maybe it's possible once again. But they're going to be looking for receivers and a quarterback regardless. Trade him, try to get a fifth, could end up being a sixth. And definitely trade a smaller trade target, Sebastian Joseph Day, useless to the Titans. There's teams desperately looking for interior defensive line help, and there are not many guys available. So uh, I'd watch out for him in a nine or someone like that. Uh, but yeah, Titans definitely should be sellers. Pretty obvious. Uh, definitely avoid trading Jeffrey Simmons. I didn't put that on here because they're not going to trade Jeffrey Simmons. Harold Landry is an interesting one. I would prefer to keep him, but if you shed that contract and look for better fits in the future, you get a pretty good draft pick, you know, for him. It's got to be a good one though. Third, third or better third plus, you know, um, but this is my main focus for Tennessee right now. I apologize for this being a little boring for the Colts, but it's true. It's what I fully believe. They got to keep their draft picks, plain and simple. Do they move on from Ballard? There's already talks about that. So a new guy's going to be drafting. You want to keep those picks there. Do you know they, the Colts don't have a ton of needs? I mean, they need some DBs. And then the question with quarterback, you'd like to think they don't need a quarterback, but uh, that's going to come up in the offseason. So you don't want to trade away draft picks and kind of disrupt anything there I don't love any of the fits for them if you look as well if you look at the trade deadline candidates of course there could be a surprise guy there always is but I don't really love the fits I know they need corner they need safety I don't love any of those guys for them it just would seem like a desperation trader hey we need this so let's get a pick for a guy that may or may not be a fit I don't really love it you know uh offense they're they're pretty much set it's just a question of quarterback going forward they got the star running back I love their receivers huge Josh Downs fan uh, they have more than just that. You know, they have offensive linemen. So um, keep those draft picks. Finish this team off. The, finish the building off next offseason. You don't want to, you know, get rid of picks and then just ca- cause yourself a tough situation, right? So that, that's, that's an easy take on the Colts there. I think the Jags should trade Brandon Scherf, and maybe he's considered an unlikely trade candidate, but still one. And I know he's a probably their best offensive lineman. He's a big part of that offensive line, and you don't want to get Trevor Lawrence killed, but they traded Cam Robinson. They're looking for tackles for the, for the future. Scherf is 32 years old. He's on an expiring deal. While they're trying to kind of retool the, the roster and may have new coaching staff, will they be trying like focused on bringing Scherf back? And there's teams that are desperate for a guard, and it's pretty much Scherf versus Nate Davis right now. And that is a major, major difference. I mean, in absurd difference. So either you get a third round pick, you possibly could get better. Probably not, but who knows? A fourth, I would consider. They probably wouldn't do it. I would do, I would trade. I would trade Brandon Scherf. You know, he's a big time guard. Uh, I would avoid trading ETM because his value is down. No one's giving up a second round pick, probably not even a third round pick for ETN. It'd probably be a fourth round pick. I wouldn't do that. Uh, if you can get a second for him, I would do it. I would actually do it then, but um, yeah, don't just be like, ah, we're selling, but not really, uh, you know, cause they trade Cam Robinson, uh, do it or don't right. Do it or don't here. The Jags, uh, this team's got talent, but they're, they're still, they got some building to do still. So, um, really should fire everybody in the off season as well. It's another to do Texans decision trade for guard trade for receiver. Both after watching last night, that offensive line performance was unbelievably bad. 
and actually it was across the entire offensive line, so that's kind of an issue because some of those guys are supposed to be pretty good. But it's mainly guard. It's mainly the guard position. Kenyon Green struggled, but he got hurt, and it was even more struggle. So we saw we saw why he was starting. It would be lovely if they can get Brandon Scherf. Will the Jags, one, will the Jags actually trade him? Two, will the Jags actually help out their division rival, a top team in the division, trade him to the Texans? Probably not. Make a call. Make a call. See what they want. Uh, Nate Davis is the other one that is probably likely to be dealt. He can help you, right? And the seems like the Bears' former offense linemen are playing better elsewhere. Uh, but, yeah, he's got, I don't know, some attitude. That, you know, sometimes he doesn't practice. It kind of goes back to the Titans day. So that's kind of the issue there uh, with Nate Davis. But he can help you. I'm trying to find if there's any other guards Notable guards that are available. The Texans desperately need one. Consider receiver. I mean, guys were getting open. I'm not a fan of Hutchinson. He he struggles to separate a little bit. But um, Robert Woods looked pretty good. I mean, these Mechie can get open. These guys can get. They're going to get Nico Collins back, and obviously Tank Dell is their big one besides Nico Collins. So I'm not worried about him. Um, Schultz needs to pick it up too, though. He looks less athletic, if that makes any sense. Um, physical, but. But they could use. They would get better adding. I would like Adam Thielen to replace Stephon Diggs. Those guys are close. That would be awesome. Kendrick Bourne would really, really good fit. 49ers, 49ers background. 49ers background coaches here. And then Boyd, if the Titans would trade, I think they would if they would trade Boyd down. Those are all similar receive style receivers that I would love as fits. Would love them. Pair them with Dell, and then most obviously Nico Collins. But uh, that offense line that was one of the worst offense line performances of the season. I'd say the Browns are Browns had a couple games that compete, maybe the Patriots, but um, that was brutal. So you might need a guard here. It's just who's it gonna be? I'm hearing more and more that maybe they stay put at receiver. But if you get could get one of these guys for a pretty decent cost, I'd say why not? I mean, it's a pretty good football team, and that should be better than how they played last night. So we'll see another team that we got our eyes on here at the trade deadline. Panthers, very obviously, should sell. I'd say Jadeveon Clowney. He's actually playing pretty well. The stats won't show it, but. The Panthers are the ultimate rebuild team. They need a court. They need a lot of things. They need a quarterback. They traded Deontay Johnson. What's the point of having these longtime veterans? And Clowney's not fully producing in their system. He he fits specific defenses. You know, defenses that blitz a lot. You know, defenses that use simulated pressures. Uh, so there are far better fits for him. So and his value is pretty pretty solid right now. I'd say you can get something for him, something a lot more than Deontay Johnson. Is he going to be part of that rebuild, of the alternate rebuild team? No. I think you push for a third-round pick. You probably don't get that. You get a fourth, definitely accept that. Fifth, maybe you just keep him. Um, I would also trade Adam Thielen, longtime veteran. He's not going to be part of the rebuild. And then Miles Sanders, if you can. It just will there be takers for Miles Sanders. Uh, I would trade those guys as well. Sell. You don't need to sell J.C. Horn. You don't need to sell your other guys like that. But those guys, you trade. Clowney, as good as he is. And he's back at home. I don't care. You, you trade him. You you focus on the rebuild. They're, they're going to go into stage one of the rebuild, unfortunately. And it doesn't take – the good thing is it doesn't take as long as it used to. But got to do it right. They could use some picks here. They didn't get enough compensation for Deontay Johnson. Go and get it for these guys. Falcons definitely need another edge rusher. They already traded for Matt Judon. He's been a little bit of a letdown, but probably still their best pass rusher. They definitely need someone else. There's some guys that would probably stay away from him. Zedaria Smith, I'm, I'm kind of avoiding, as you can tell, of this whole video because the durability concerns, he's declined, but mainly the Browns want a fourth or a fifth round pick. Seems a little rich. I worry he's going to come in, go in somewhere, and he's going to miss games. You know, uh, I would like Preston Smith for them if the Packers are trading him. Uh, would be a really good fit off the edge for them, but they also struggle to stop the run. I think Smith gets pretty involved in stopping the run. Uh, Baron Browning, I think, would be a pretty good fit, a younger option that could be around for the future. And then Clowney would make some sense. He doesn't fit as good with the Falcons as he does some other teams, but he's the best that I listed. He would give him a boost. I think Brett Preston Smith fits the best if you're looking for a veteran, but we'll see. And again, it, unless he's cheap, be very cautious with a guy like Zedaria Smith, so we'll see what the Falcons do. I think it's either edge or nothing when it comes to Atlanta. Saints, I would trade Chase Young a one-year deal. Teams are desperate for a pass rusher. You know, trade him, get something. The pass rush is underwhelming. They couldn't do anything against the Chargers last week. Uh, you know, I think they should avoid buying because they're already spending so much money and they should not be a buying team uh, and just don't stay in win-now mode. They're, they're a team that stays super confident no matter what. I love the confidence, but sometimes it, too much could be a bad thing, so... Um, please don't be adding or doing anything like that. I would say trade Marshawn Latimer, but he's cu currently injured. Love him. Love his game. Uh, big part of the Saints, but 
you can get something good for him if he's healthy. And, and they not only could find – they're really good at finding corners to replace him, but they kind of already have the corners. Kool-Aid McKinstry, another one for the future. But they got a list of young corners that can help. So, I mean, if you could trade him for a decent pick, that's something as well. But trade Chase Young. Is he going to be part of the future? You don't really need it right now. So, uh, pass rush has been underwhelming. So, I would do it. Look for a fourth-round pick or better. I think it's su- certainly possible. The Bucs, I'd say trade for a receiver, but it's got to be a specific type of receiver. And I, I really think Tyler Boyd is the one that really stands out the most here uh, because they obviously lost Chris Godwin for the season. He's a, one of the best slot receivers in football. And then Mike Evans will be back in a couple weeks, but hamstring for those veteran guys, pretty tough. They have Jalen McMillan, but I mean, they have guys, but you need someone else that can play. And Tyler Boyd is going to be a poor man's Chris Godwin, that style receiver. I think it would work perfectly with Baker Mayfield. I mean, Thielen can play in the slot. Will Panthers trade him to the Bucs? I don't know. Definitely no point to going for Mike Williams, guys like that. Uh, I love Cooper Cup as a fit, but I definitely don't think he'll be traded for, from the Rams right now. Boyd's the one that really fits. Um, and I'd say avoid adding multi-year contracts with guys because that's why Boyd's perfect. Cheap contract, one year expiring. Chris Godwin's contract is expiring. They're going to want to re-sign him, though. They're probably going to get him back. Uh, teams might be scared about the injury, post-injury. Um, so if you add, like, say Tyler Boyd had multiple years on his deal. Let's say Adam Thielen has an extra year on his deal. You know, and then you want to get Godwin back. It's like, oh, we're in a weird spot now. So um, could look to add a pass rusher. No real must there. The d- defensive backs are playing poorly, but they have the guys that they want to use, right? They don't want to replace these guys. They just need them to play better right now. So interesting situation for Tampa Bay. Chargers are an interesting one as well because they get brought up, especially with the receivers. And I'm I'm leaning keep the draft picks. There is one receiver I love for them, and that is Darius Slayton. I, I wanted to say trade for Darius Slayton is what I wanted to say. I don't get the feeling the Giants are going to trade him right now. I think they would only trade him, kind of like the past years. They, they got offered so much in the past years because Slayton's ava- uh, available every time at the deadline, it feels like. But um, he play, he's playing pretty good for them. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think it would happen for like a fourth round pick, which is way too much. Maybe a fifth. Is that too much? Because the Chargers devalued the position and now we're going to value it again. So it's a little interesting, but I do love that fit. I don't love the other fits for them. Right, Mike Williams, I guess, would fit with Justin Herbert, but I don't, I, I would not do that. I mean, you you got rid of him for nothing. And I know it was a financial for financial reasons. It's a major difference if you got him now versus what you got you got rid of him for. The price is way, way cheaper now, but you're trading a draft pick. I value draft picks. Look how they drafted. Look how the Chargers drafted. It's another reason to keep the draft picks. I value draft picks more than money. That's me. I think you build a championship thing through the draft. You started with Joe Alt and these other guys you got. Cam Hart looks pretty good. Uh, McConkey, obviously. Uh, so... It looked really weird. I wouldn't love it trading for Williams. And the other receivers, guys like Thielen, guys like Bourne, Osborne, Tyler Boyd, they're, they're, they thrive from the slot, right? Uh, McConkey, that is where he's dominating right now. So I, I don't know. I think that would disrupt things. So it's several reasons. I don't love the fits. Keep your draft picks because you're drafted so well. That's where I'm at. Slayton, I would love to fit. And consider a corner because they've been beat up at corner. I think Jonathan Jones would be a pretty good uh, fit. But get him for a sixth or a seventh. A seventh would be a steal. Sixth, then I would be okay with it for sure. Anything more than that. Fifth's not bad. Anything more than that. Uh, keep your draft picks. So Chargers are, are interesting because people want them to be full-on buyers. I understand it, but got to understand my reasoning as well here. Broncos got a trade for a receiver. They're impressive right now. Bo Nix is heating up. The defense is playing great. Cortland Sutton's awesome. Always love me some Cortland Sutton. They need someone else. All these other guys are just depth guys. Uh, you know, deeper depth guys that they have. Uh, Osborne's one to watch. Would be cheap. He's young. I think he'd work out uh, in this system as well. So Osborne's one to watch. I would love Thielen for them as well. Two former Vikings there. Thielen would plug in the slot. Uh, you know, and, and, and think really help Bo Nix develop even more. Uh, so I, I think he would work well. And Tyler Boyd's kind of similar. Um, I would like, if you're going to go for that veteran slot, I would like feeling a little more for them. If you're going for kind of a cheaper guy that might be their second best receiver, believe it or not, people would probably disagree with that. I think Osborne could be that guy. So um, yeah, I'd, be I'd say avoid trading away defensive players. I hear guys like Baron Browning, Baron Browning, they're going to trade him. I heard Jonathan Cooper. I really don't think that's going to happen. Uh, DJ Jones, I, their defense is playing well right now. Why would you disrupt that? I don't think they're going to get a premium for those guys. I just hang on to your players unless you get that absolute premium. 
better than expected for them. So Broncos, another big team to watch at the trade deadline as they're playing some good football right now. Got a weird one for the Raiders. It's weird because you think they should be sellers, not buyers. And I'm not really saying they should be buyers. I just say, just just simple. Just add a running back if he's dirt cheap. I look at one guy there, Khalil Herbert. You know, if it's ETN, you'd have to play, pay a premium. You need your premium draft picks. Uh, if it's Sanders, is that a guy that's part of the long-term future? And you can add a cheap running back like Khalil Herbert, who's familiar with Getsy's offense. I don't think Getsy should be the guy next year, but it was kind of a bonus there. But I think he, you know, he would be their best running back. He's had some good reps in his past. Bears aren't using him right now, and I think he'd be part of the future as well. You know, and it's not like you're locked in with that. You're not locked into a lot of money. So trade something real cheap, seventh round picks, swap of picks, whatever for him. You could use him right now. They have the worst running game in football. You could use him for the future. And I would say, yeah, make sure you avoid trading decent draft picks. You might need to go up and get your. They're not going to do that. They're not going. I'm probably going to say they're going to sit put, not do anything. But it can't hurt to add a running back. That you know, it's really not just for right now. Uh, it could be for the future, but it's not really a must for me. You can find a running back in the draft next year. Um, you can sign a guy for cheap as well. It's not, it's not a must. If they're gonna, I just wish they had a, a trade piece to trade away that I could have talked about on here. So not the, not a whole lot to break down when it comes to the Raiders. Chiefs already added multiple pieces. I say they add one more trade for a defensive back or maybe two, a corner and a safety. How about Mike Edwards? He could be shopped from. The Buffalo Bills, he was with the Chiefs last year. He helped them win a Super Bowl. So really good. He's almost like a gadget safety. You could use him in different ways. Uh, and they don't necessarily need a starting safety right now. Their corner, cornerback is where they have injuries. But Mike Edwards, you know fits. You know he can rotate and help you. Why not? It'd be dirt cheap. And then look at some corners. Tredavious White, uh, who would fit a cover two corner. The Chiefs run man in cover two. Jonathan Jones, man coverage corner. Jones uh, is much better than White right now. Uh I think talent-wise, because White's dropped off, and durability mainly. Um, what if they trade back for Mike Edwards? I'd watch out for that, actually, what comes to Kansas City, but trust them in their process for sure. Cardinals need to add an edge rusher. They have one of the weaker edge groups in football, and some of it is due to injuries, some going into the season and some to, you know recently. Uh, it's a good football team right now. They're play- They're getting better. They're going to continue to get better. The offense is playing better. They um, are... They- they're struggling to get the quarterback. They're first in the NFC West. Go get a pass rusher. They need it. Harold Landry, I love the fit. I don't know if the Titans trade him. It's a little scary because he has multiple years left on his deal at a pretty decent price, like 17 or so million per year. I like the fit. I actually compared B.J. Ajilari to Landry coming out. So you have a fit. I know Ajilari is injured but for the year, but you have a good fit there. I think he would fit in in Gannon's defense. He could be their guy now to help them and for the future. That's my my thing here. You don't want to trade a guy that's just for now because the Cardinals are still kind of a future team that can be sneaky right now. So avoid the older guys. Avoid the yeah the longtime veteran guys. Landry and Landry uh, with the Titans. Yomanti Osford, their GM, was with the Tennessee Titans too, so familiar with him. So a lot of connections there. And Baron Browning could be part of the future as well, and it would fit that scheme for sure. So it would have to be a specific, that's a tricky part because the Cardinals badly need an edge. They know it, but. You don't want to trade for an old guy like Zedaria Smith. Are they going to view Clowney as a fit? They could. You know, it's still another veteran. It's a little tricky. I think they're looking for specific type of guys, as they should here. But the Cardinals are one to watch when it comes to the edge position. They could look for an interior defensive lineman, too, because they could get better there, stopping a run. Devon Godshaw, um, DJ Jones, possibly. uh, Sebastian Joseph Day is kind of a smaller one there. But uh, in terms of... uh, how good he is, I mean, not like actual size, but yeah, so Cardinals can look for edge or defensive tackle. 49ers, I, I like a lot of fits in terms of the trade candidates. I'd say trade for a defensive tackle. They're missing Hargrave, and it's just not quite the interior line it used to be during the prime defense uh, defensive years for the 49ers, but Devon Godshaw being brought up, do the Patriots actually want to trade him? I know they're kind of selling right now. That would be big time for them if they get a guy like that. DJ Jones has played for the 49ers before, so we know he would fit. I'd probably list him one, but are the Broncos actually trading him? I think Godshaw might be a little more. Maybe both aren't super likely, but um, yeah, and Sebastian Joseph Day, who's actually played for the Niners as well, is kind of a smaller name to watch here. And I'd consider other positions 
Adam Thielen, Tyler Boyd, Tra- Traylon Burks is an interesting one too because I think he's like a poor man. His play style is a poor man's Debo. I think they can get, kind of get the most out of him as they need kind of rotation receivers or do they need a starter like a Thielen. And then Genevieve and Clowney, I consider, yeah, do they need a D tackle or a DN more because Nick Bosa needs some help. Clowney would help them get to more of that contender and help them get more pass rush, really elevate guys like Nick Bosa. So it's a lot of good options. The 49ers, could, they have a lot of cap space. Of course, they want some quite a bit to roll over. But they're a team that has a lot of fits, and they could use these players to make as teams that make trades to trade the line are teams that are going for a Super Bowl. 49ers are going for a Super Bowl, so they're, they're definitely a team to watch uh, for some of these players or more that we mentioned here. The Seahawks, I really want them to keep their draft picks, please. I, I'm afraid they may not. They could use offense line help. They could use edge help. So they could do that. Do they, does Mike McDonald go get his guy? Jadeveon Clowney could see it. They need their draft pick, so they already made multiple trades. I don't want them to get desperate. You know, they could be good if they stay a little more consistent. They can't really do that right now. I I, I still they're a team of the near future. They still need to find their quarterback in the future, but they have a really good coaching staff. They've they've drafted, I think, pretty well over the years. Keep your draft picks. You already traded multiple away. Don't focus on this year. Do not go all in on this year. Like it, it's not going to take too long, you know, another year or so. Uh, so I, I keep your draft pick. Stop trading more away. But third team I could see uh, buying at, definitely at the deadline. I just wouldn't really agree with it. If they do, add some decent players for a cheap cost. In the Rams, something I think they will do, but you might as well trade Tredavious White. Is he a major distraction right now? No, but I think it's a little bit of one. Like he wants to be playing. He's not there. Every week we hear about they're discussing what to do with them. Just, just trade them. Get something for them. Uh, get some more picks here. Try, you know, could they add a receiver if Puka Nakua's injury is more serious than it sounds? I don't think it's that serious. Maybe he won't play this week. But you know, could they add a receiver? A lot of these guys available are slot receivers, and then both Cooper Cup and Nakua play very well from the slot. Of course, they can use both of them. But um, yeah, so it's tough to find pinpoint guys that they could actually add. Trade Trey White, get a six, you know, in a swap deal or just a six straight, straight up. That'd be great. Maybe could end up a seven. Consider Derek Forrest. They don't necessarily need a safety, but he would fit their scheme very well. And actually, would pair him with Cameron Curl, who used to be paired with. That's a guy that I've heard his name pop up a little bit. Um, we actually talked about him going into the season, which it didn't happen, but the commander safety there who doesn't really fit Dan Quinn, you know, the new defense for, for the commanders and ones did kind of like Cameron Curl. They didn't bring him back. So he doesn't fit the new scheme. Um, so I think it'd be a really good fit. It actually, I think it would be an upgrade, but they don't necessarily need a guy like that, but that's going to wrap it up for this video. It was a big one. Really enjoyed it. A lot of different scenarios, a lot of different thoughts here, a lot of different different trade targets, trade candidates. Let me know your guys' thoughts about your team in the comments. We have trade deadline videos on the channel. And more to come. We have week nine coverage, week 10 next week. So like, subscribe to Novogate Zon. It's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.